Hello, this is our first video covering LO1, the first learning objective in the course, which is for the exam in particular, although a lot of this content is also relevant for your assignment and overlaps quite a lot with LO2 as well. So we're going to be talking today about the project lifecycle. In quite a broad overview sense, we'll go into more detail about each of our phases in future videos, but we are going to first of all introduce what these phases are, how they interact, how they link, and how iteration can occur in this model. And then we're gonna finally discuss why following a formal methodology like the one we're gonna talk about, why that is an advantage, why it's good. First of all then, what is a project? Maybe stating the obvious a little bit, but it's worth defining it. So a project is an individual or collaborative enterprise that is carefully planned to achieve a particular goal. So really, in other words, it's individual, so yourself, or you as part of a wider team, it could be a massive team, it could be hundreds of people, it could be you and a few others. An enterprise being some kind of business activity. And the fact that you are carefully planning it is really important. You're not just waking up and going, okay, I want to become a billionaire. I want to create a new Facebook. You are planning it very carefully to achieve a specific, a particular goal. It's not just a random thought you've got, it's a carefully planned operation. Now this particular goal could be anything. It could be a product, it could be a service. But of course, we're looking at it from an IT perspective, so an IT product, an IT service. So things like research projects, things like self-driving cars need to do object detection, detect different objects in a video. That's effectively the first step to have a self-driving car or a self-driving drone, say. So that is an area of research in IT or computer science. Also things like software development, so building a new app, building a new version of a website like Twitter. So actually developing some software, writing some code to make a new website or app or product, some software package. Also actually developing a system. So an IT system are often where things uh, go wrong. So for example, this is a signaling room on a, a train line, I suppose, maybe London Underground. A lot of IT infrastructure here, so the computers, the screens, all the wires connected behind the scenes, all the actual signals in this case. So actually de deploying the system and making it work and testing it and so on, this may also require an element of research and software development, a lot going on. And another example could be change management. So a big IT uh, ongoing project in lots of organizations is adapting to new technology. So for example, updating from old hard drives into SSDs is something which is happening a lot in organizations at the moment, i.e. updating your infrastructure to the latest model. Also things like needs assessment, so figuring out what a problem is in society maybe. So for example, not enough disabled access on transport. You, you realize there's a need there and you adapt to it by creating a new product, by testing a product, see if it works, to try and fill in a gap in the market. So this whole LO could be applied to any project, so construction, transport, infrastructure, anything like that, anything in normal life. But we're obviously gonna look at it from a more IT slant. What we're going to be looking at in the next few videos are the components, the phases of what we call the project life cycle. So in the same way that humans have a life cycle, we're born, we're babies, we're toddlers, we are teenagers, young adults, adults, pensioners, etc. That is our life cycle. Projects, all formal projects really, should have a defined set of phases. And in terms of what we're looking at, we have got four phases. And the idea being, if you follow these phases correctly, if you follow them how they're meant to be followed, there's gonna be a more chance of you actually completing the project successfully. We'll look more at the different advantages a bit later, but having a clear set of phases is really valuable. Having a formal methodology is really, really valuable. So if I have a project to, I don't know, build a new bookcase in my living room, which I've actually had to do recently, I'm not following a clear set of phases. I'm just making it. I'm just going to buy a bookcase, building it, putting it up. It's not a very, formal project. But if you are doing a proper project like the ones we just looked at, you should be following a clear methodology, a clear life cycle with a set number of phases. We said earlier that projects can be individual or collaborative. Assuming they are collaborative, i.e. have more than one person, you need to have a project manager, someone who is in complete control of the project. They have responsibility for it. They are the most important person in the project, essentially. So usually they're not going to carry out any of our actual tasks they're gonna delegate for work to someone else, which is why we often have an image of a manager being a bit lazy, maybe with their feet up on the desk, 
but actually their job is to ensure that each phase is being followed correctly. So if something goes wrong, it's his or her job to fix it and address it and maybe do some iteration as well, as we'll talk about. Being a project manager is quite a serious job. You often need to have certain qualifications to do it, maybe a degree, maybe a master's degree, an MBA, something like that, to become a project manager, because you've got a lot of responsibility. There's also a lot of theory behind it, so there are lots of different methodologies for completing projects, different ways of doing things, is what a methodology is. We're looking at just one, thankfully for you, just one with only four phases. There are more complicated methodologies available, which each have their own pros and cons. But I want just four phases. And these four phases are initiation, first of all, followed by planning, followed by execution, followed by evaluation. Notice how they are connected, i.e. we have almost a cycle here, with the exception of evaluation, which doesn't connect, doesn't interact with initiation. You see there's no arrow between the fourth phase and our first phase here. Really, really important. But these are our four phases of our project. A phase being a discrete unit of time. So once we finish initiation, once we finish our first phase, we can kind of ignore it and move on to our next phase. So just a part of our overall project. So the life cycle is this entire thing. And once we finish, once we complete our project, that's it. There's no going back to initiation unless we are doing a new project. The reason for having distinct phases which are connected to each other is that we can only proceed to the next phase after we finish our current phase. So for example, if we are currently on planning, we can't move on to execution until we've finished planning. And we're not going to go back, you can see the arrow is going in only one direction, we have to finish our phase before we move forward and move towards the end of our life cycle. My main advice here would be to learn these, the names, and also the order. So the order is just as important as the names, and the names do sort of tell you what is going on. But we'll look at each one individually moving forwards. A word I've mentioned a few times already is interaction. So interaction in this context is about how our phases connect, how they link to each other. So going back a second to our diagram here, we can see that initiation links to planning, but nothing else. So initiation is not linking to evaluation, there's no arrow going between them. Whereas here, execution is linked to planning and also linked to evaluation as well. So with the exception of evaluation and initiation, the phases, the two other phases, only two other ones, have two links. But evaluation and initiation only have one link each. Really important, that's how they connect to each other, how they interact. So this table here is quite fearful looking at it. It's quite uh, daunting because this really summarizes the entire learning objective. Of course, we're going to talk about each one individually, each task here, but we can think about them in terms of inputs and outputs. So what is coming into a phase? What do we need coming into a phase before we start it? And what is that phase going to produce? What is going to be outputted from that phase? And we'll look at each one of these in future videos, but this is also how they interact, how these outputs are then used in the inputs. So hopefully you can see here that actually, the outputs will often link into the inputs of the next phase with the exception of evaluation because these outputs don't go anywhere because it doesn't connect to the next phase. Another word I've used a couple of times is iteration, another I word constantly. We've got interaction and iteration, two different words. Iteration is a word that doesn't come up too often in everyday English, but you may hear it occasionally when a new product or a new movie or a new uh, something is launched and you might hear it described as the latest iteration in a series. So here we've got however many iPhones which have been released over the years. So the first iPhone up until the iPhone 10. Each one is a new iteration in the iPhone series. Iteration is meaning repeating a process, repeating a product in this case, just changing it a little bit, making it better. We're doing the same sort of thing over and over again in our series. So in our context, repeating a process is what it is. So this will often occur when something goes wrong. So projects don't always go perfectly. In fact, as a project manager, often your job is to fix issues because things go wrong all the time, which is actually fairly normal as long as you recover. So by recovering, you may have to iterate and do the task again. So repeat a task, repeat a process if it hasn't quite worked the first time. Of course, changing it and making it better, as in don't just do the same thing again if it hasn't worked, try and fix it and then do it again. So in practice, if a task has gone wrong, you may be forced to repeat the entire phase you are currently in, which is not a very good scenario, but it's better than having to repeat the previous one, because maybe you are at execution 
and something goes wrong and actually you've got to go all the way back to initiation because something at the very start didn't work and that's caused an issue down the line. Of course, as a PM, as a manager, you should try and stop it getting wrong as soon as possible, but you may have to iterate, you may have to repeat and go back and do something again because it hasn't quite worked the first time. And identifying where iteration may be needed is really a job for the project manager and this will often be done during each phase review, which is the last thing which happens in each phase. If we go back to our table, we can see phase review occurs in each of our four phases. Really, the final evaluation report includes a phase review, as we'll look at. And this is usually where the PM is going to sit back and go, OK, what's worked, what hasn't worked? And if it hasn't worked, maybe we have to do some iteration and do it again, potentially. I said earlier that there are other methodologies available. So if you are a professional project manager, you might decide to choose a different methodology to the four phase one we've looked at so far. So for example, this one here is more complex. This one has got different names, but it's essentially the same sort of idea. This one has got a lot of iteration going on. It spirals and there's lots of iteration. This one here, again, lots of iteration because we're looping back between our different phases. Again, the names are different. But I want you to know that there are different options available but the whole idea is following a clear methodology is better than just winging it, just doing it yourself. There's no point starting a project, a complex one, and just doing it as you go. It's better to follow a very clear structure so that everyone knows what's going on. So let's talk about what some advantages of following a clear methodology like the one we are with four phases. So as I say, having a clear structure is really, really important. Everyone being able to go and look at our model and going, okay, I know exactly what is going to go on in each phase is really, really valuable to your project. If someone if someone doesn't know what's going on, that's going to really affect the success of your project because we don't want confusion. We want nice we want a nice clear structure here. Similarly, this clear structure leads to less uncertainty about what tasks need to be completed, first of all, and when they need to be completed, because some tasks rely are dependent on previous tasks being completed. So for example, testing, if you're trying to test a product before you've made it, it's not gonna work. So having a clear order as well is really, really important, it leads to less uncertainty. Uncertainty is just gonna waste time. There's also a lot of time built in to reflect and adapt. So as I say, projects often go wrong. It's quite normal for stuff to go wrong. It's hard to predict stuff exactly. In a model, in a formal model, there's always going to be some time to reflect. Always time to reflect. So here, test and feedback is about reflecting, about figuring out what's gone wrong, what's worked, and how can we fix stuff which didn't go so well. In our one we're looking at, I keep jumping back and forth here, we've got phase reviews. This is where we are deciding what has worked and what needs to be fixed. Maybe we need to iterate a little bit. As a project manager, one of your key jobs is to ensure the project finishes on time. Having a very distinct phase structure means it's very easy to track how the project is doing, how it's progressing against your planned time scale. So maybe you've said, okay, by December, we need to finish initiation. Having a distinct phase makes that quite easy. If you are doing, if you're not following a structure and you're just doing the project, it can be quite hard to figure out when you are halfway finished, when you are almost finished. It's hard to track any progress because you haven't got a clear structure to rely on.